Hey, I'm glad you're here, and I'm so glad to be back after seven months of not publishing an episode of the Deepening Place podcast. You know, yesterday, Facebook and Instagram were down, and it made me think of all the people I'd lose contact with if it never returned. So I invite you to visit my website, AngelaAbide.com, sign up for the email list so we can stay in touch. There's also links to this podcast and the Mission Manhood podcast and the Love Revolution blog. I'm starting a new feature called Ask Angela, so you can use the contact form there on the website to submit a question. And as always, I just appreciate your support so much. Thank you very much. Please, if you have a minute, rate, review, subscribe, and also share if you know somebody who might enjoy this content. Hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to this place, this space that we can share together. Back in February of 2020, I started The Deepening Place. It was actually, the first episode was released in March. I'm going to back up first and tell you just briefly, I think I mentioned this on some of the earlier episodes of The Deepening Place, the origins. And if you're interested, there's a little article on my website under the Deepening Place podcast tab, and it goes into the origin of the Deepening Place. But just to briefly summarize, probably 25 years ago, I was listening to an audio book called A Wind in the Door by Madeline Lingle. For those of you who remember A Wrinkle in Time, that's the more popular book. There were two or three books after that that make up the, no, it's a quintet. So it's four, four books that that make up that series. A Wind in the Door is the second one. It's a kid's book, but it was very meaningful to me because it reflected what I thought I saw going on in the world, which is people are swirling out of control and they're losing touch with their source. And as a result, we're going to destroy ourselves. We're going to destroy our civilization and our humanity. The way that we overcome that is to get reconnected with our source and to get connected with each other because we're one. And that's how we're going to overcome the darkness and allow the light. When we started, I met a man named Jai Turk. He is a beautiful soul and I love him very much. I feel like Jai entered my life at exactly the right time, moving in his gifts. He is someone who helps people overcome their fear and limitations. And I believe that's his spiritual gift. The cool thing about my relationship with Jai is it was what I believed to be possible. Jai's younger and I'm older. Jai's a man. I'm a woman. Jai's black. I'm white. But it didn't matter. And my theory is, or was, still is, that we have this inner self that's ageless, timeless, that's one. Some people look at that as like the divine spark. When we get too far away from that, we're we're fractured and scattered. And the closer we can get to that, if you're in fellowship with someone who also believes that, it's really just this deep experiencing of life. And most people have experienced it. Most people have even involuntarily dropped down into their heart center and experienced that moment. Sometimes it's as simple as when you're struck by beauty, when you're caught off guard by like the moon rising. Oh my goodness, look at that big orange ball or the sunset or the first time you held your baby or a baby. All time stops for a moment and you're in your moment. You're just caught off guard by that. That feeling, that place is a place that we can get to voluntarily. It happens to us involuntarily. That's just to let us know that that's there. We can go there and we can get there and we can fellowship with each other from there. And that's where miracles can happen. 
I have this relationship with Jai, and we talked about a podcast. How cool would it be to show people that this is possible? How cool would that be? Just to get on a podcast and talk about our philosophy, our beliefs. We had different religious backgrounds. We had arrived at different places with religion and spirituality. But through all that, through all of those differences, we love each other. I'd wanted to do a podcast forever. And I will say, I'm not sure that I would have done it without Jai. I was too afraid. And he was very encouraging. Shortly after we started the podcast, the first episode came out the first week of March of 2020. Nobody could have predicted what was about to happen to our country. If you've listened to those first episodes of The Deepening Place, you can hear that I was very concerned about the state of humanity. And it's like that book from 25 years ago, I I sensed it then, but we had gotten closer and closer and closer and closer to that reality of getting so far apart from each other and breaking apart and destroying ourselves. And that was in March of 2020. I think 2016 really ratcheted it up with Donald Trump running for president and the division and the hatred and the ugliness and the bitterness just was at an all-time high. That's probably what I was feeling. So here we are about to experience a global pandemic and all the fear and the unknown. Also, we're going through a presidential election. And in the middle of that, we had Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, race riots, Black Lives Matter, so many things happen, so much division, so much conflict, so much trauma. And it really felt kind of like if you've ever been in the ocean and you're just standing there and the waves are sort of lapping and then they get more intense and then they get more intense and then you can't even stand up anymore and you just keep going under. That's kind of how it felt. I had a real Pollyanna attitude toward everything. Like, love will save the world. And it's not that I don't believe that anymore. I do. I do believe that. But the attitude I had before, I think, was that it was sort of just like this optional add-on. So for people who were seekers, for people who wanted to have a deeper experience with spirituality, there's a way. And I was here to show you that way. And Jai and I were going to model that for you. And we were going to talk about spirituality and racism, and we're going to show the world that love is possible. It's an option. I got beat down with 2020. There's all the stuff that we know happened, and then there's a lot of personal stuff. In October of 2020, I moved to Macon, Georgia to help my parents. My mother had Alzheimer's and she had gotten to a point where it was really difficult for my dad to care for her alone. I talked to my family and we decided that I should go. And when I went, I thought it would be a few weeks, maybe a month. And it ended up being eight months. And my mother died in June, uh, June the 7th. That, that's just a piece of it. I mean, there's other stuff as well that, that I won't share because it involves other people's stories. Just like everybody else, life happened. Life happened in a very intense way. And, you know, a lot of people talk about trauma. I think we've all experienced that this last year. We are beat down. We are fried. What I have learned and what I've become convinced of, this is not an option. If we don't learn to get centered, to go deeper, to learn to love each other, we're going to lose it. We're going to lose our way of life. We're going to lose the ability to speak. And we're going to lose love. We need to act now to turn the tide, to bring light to the darkness. I believe part of my purpose and mission in life is to help people understand how to do that. It's been something that I've been preparing for, for my whole life. 
I didn't know what I was preparing for, but I always felt that calling. I wanted to make the world a better place, always. I thought it might be helpful to tell you a little bit about myself. I have three main guideposts, I suppose. And one of those is probably the oldest and original one is my relationship with Christ. I was raised in a Christian home, in a Christian church. I've always been a seeker. I've always wanted to know the truth. And for the first probably 35, maybe even 40 years of my life, I wanted to make that truth exist within the box of Christianity. What I came to realize is that Christians are not the only ones who have truth. And I started, it took a lot of courage, but I started to explore outside of that box. The truth is everywhere. God's truth is everywhere. So much of my Christian faith had been influenced by people's belief. And it was to the extent that I couldn't separate out people's opinions and beliefs from the truth. And so stepping away from that has given me an ability to really deepen in terms of my faith in Christ. What I have arrived to is I consider myself a Christ follower. Every, everything that I do, everything that I say, my whole life is based on that. If you consider yourself to be a Christian, or if you don't, you might be a little bit nervous about that. I encourage you just to hold the space for that. If you're not a Christian, I will never try to convert you to anything. My purpose here is to help people understand how to love. What I have discovered is the message of Christ is pure. It's our interpretation of that message that has led to people being hurt and for people walking away from it. And so what we have to do is learn to love. If you're a Christian listening to this, that might make you a little nervous because we've been conditioned to really revere belief. And belief has its place, and belief is good, but it's not the end-all be-all. It's the Word. That's a universal concept, and I'll explain that more later. My influence other than Christ has been the Constitution. I was a history major in college. Based on my background and my searching and my love for Christ, I really saw that our founding fathers were trying to wrestle with something that was very similar. You have this divine spark in you, and we're going to honor that, and we're going to build a fence around that, and we're going to protect that. So that individual sovereignty is not about me just being an opinionated jerk. It's about me going within and discovering not just who I am, who I am in Christ, and to wrestle with that and to work that out, and then to allow that to come forth from me as my offering to the world. That's what freedom of speech is about. It's not just about people saying whatever is in their brain, although they have the right to do that. But there's something very holy, very fundamental and elemental that we're protecting with that. And we give that up at our peril. Another thing that kind of made my circle complete has been internal family systems therapy. I am a licensed professional counselor. Just to continue my studies, I encountered internal family systems therapy when I went to an internal family systems therapist, and I'm really grateful that I did. Richard Schwartz is the founder of Internal Family Systems Therapy, and he discovered that his clients naturally had this, what he calls self. 
And he's not the only one that's ever talked about this. So if you've encountered this, it wasn't original to him. The system that he built around it is what's original to him. So he realized that the clients he was working with had this core that seemed to know the truth. It was their authentic self. And then the small self or the ego self is the part that would run around and and wreak havoc. And they were tossed about by their mind and emotions. Learning to become a good self-manager, learning to drop down beneath my mind and get centered in self and learning to love myself. And instead of being critical toward those weak parts that were just trying to do the best they could, I could sit in self and minister to them and love them. And that's really where my idea came about that I can't do for other people what I haven't done for myself. That goes back to when Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So you have to love you first. You have to get that straight first so that that love can then flow out of you to the next person. And the next person is your neighbor. And that's your wife, your husband, your spouse, your partner, your children, your friends, your circle. And then that kind of love is the love that's going to save the world. So it starts with you in your own heart. Right now, what we have exalted over love and heart connection is thoughts and beliefs. And we're majoring on right thinking and right believing. And the people who aren't thinking right or believing right are demonized. And that's a a familiar pattern. We've done that. The people on the far right have done that. The people on the far left are doing that. With everything happening in the world, it felt like my Pollyanna-ish dreams were really challenged. I believe my relationship with Jai was really challenged. We started talking about race and uncovering some beliefs or we got real and it wasn't easy. Eventually, Jai felt that he was supposed to, to go home and help his family. And the deepening place as we knew it, or as I had envisioned it, kind of came to a halt. So I started interviewing people sporadically. And then eventually, earlier this year, I decided just to press pause. And one reason for that was I had started an Instagram account called Mission Manhood. As a therapist, that's an area that I really love working in, masculinity, helping and encouraging men, helping people understand masculinity. In June of 2021, I started a podcast called Mission Manhood. It's been such a joy and privilege to have conversations with men about masculinity, talking to men who are working in that field and and trying to make a difference. That's a reason I wanted to get involved on that side too, is to encourage men in their masculinity, in masculine leadership. And the blessing for me has been immense because I talk a lot about masculine and feminine energy and how we need both. In internal family systems, part of that self is I'm a good parent to myself. If I'm going to manage these parts, my ego parts, in an effective way, I need structure and order, which is the masculine, and I need nurture and care, which is the feminine. And that's the same for everyone. You need nurture and care and structure and order. So we all have to learn that divine dance between the two. Being over in that men's space and focusing on masculinity has helped me in my own life to understand that, helped me to understand the dance better. And I really believe it's a piece I needed in order to get started here again. I needed to deepen my understanding of that. I'm super excited 
to be back. I'm nervous about doing solo episodes, but I'm not going to be afraid. Jordan Peterson says, I think it's rule eight of his 12 rules for life. Tell the truth, or at least don't lie. This podcast for me is telling the truth. And in the world and in my relationship with other people, my goal is to at least don't lie. And what I mean by that is this is a place where as nervous as it makes me to speak, I do feel like it is a place that is mine, that I can say what I need to say from that center, from that self. And I invite people to the table. My saying is meet me in the middle for a love revolution. I'm hoping that we can loosen our grip on our belief enough so that we can turn toward each other and see each other. And that's really the love that will save the world. I truly believe that. It's not going to be easy, but it's necessary. My goals for this podcast are to help you get centered in yourself, to help you learn to love and to create something that is shareable. Because I think one of the most important things we can do is to tell the truth. And a lot of people aren't open to it right now. One of the first things that we can do here is to talk about compassion. And what I've noticed is there are a lot of people that are afraid on either side. And the more fear there is, the more people get away from the center and cling to their beliefs. So there's a lot of blindness. And one thing that I used to say, if you've listened to the previous episodes of The Deepening Place, is our greatest sin is our refusal to see. And when we refuse to see, We cut ourselves off from the truth, and we can't see each other. The truth is, we are one. I am you. You are me. And our highest good is to get deeper so that we can connect with each other. And that is where we become the body, a body, the body of Christ. And back to the Founding Fathers. We the people. It's a very similar idea to the body of Christ. I would like to encourage you don't let people's words or the different way they describe a similar truth put you off. We need each other right now. There's not anybody that you're going to agree with 100%, but you need to look for and follow people who are trying to tell the truth. I'll give you an example from my own life. Barry Weiss, she is a Jewish lady. She was very liberal. I'm not sure where she stands with that right now. But she is one of the bravest people that I know of. She gave up her job at the New York Times. And if you haven't read her resignation letter. If you care about freedom of speech, I think you might find it interesting. I have followed her here and there and listened to a couple of podcasts and read some things that she's written. We have completely diverse backgrounds, but we have so much in common. The other day I was listening to a podcast and she was interviewing this man and I was tracking and enjoying and agreeing. And then they got to a point where they were talking about an issue that's very divisive right now. And I was completely disappointed with the way that she and her guest handled it. I feel like there's so many people I've lost through this that have become so politicized that it's hard to have a relationship with them. 
that manager inside of me that wants to protect me from being hurt like that just overreacts. I'm very trigger happy. And so I want to encourage you, give people grace because I just, I came home and wrote a letter and I, I don't know who got that letter or where it went. And I, I have no idea if she ever saw it or not, but it made me feel better to write it. I think that's very important for us to be impeccable with our word, to get the angst outside of ourselves. And so sometimes a letter or journaling or whatever. But I mean, the very next episode, she's saying something super important again. My whole point is nobody's perfect and nobody's going to say it exactly right. We have to stop cutting people off because they're not saying it right. And that's one of the, the problems with political correctness is we demonize people for wrestling with the truth. When historically, the beauty of freedom of speech is I get this idea that I think is fantastic. I'm able to run it past some people and I get beat down for it. And I have to take it back and refine it. If I'm never able to say what I believe, if I'm never able to offer an opinion, if I'm just expected to accept the acceptable truth, that's the opposite of how we're supposed to be. We're meant to wrestle with the truth. Speaking of that, I have a lot of things that I want to tell you, a lot of things that I want to share with you. When I think about the problems of the world, as crazy as it sounds, I think I know how to help. I know what to do. And so this podcast is my way of sharing that. If you pray, I ask you to pray for me. It takes a lot of courage to speak and I want to be brave. Another thing is it's so much and the way the inspiration comes is dry desert to (laughs) gushing. And I want to learn how to manage that and to be able to present it in a way that makes sense to people, that's helpful to people, that people can take a bite and digest it and learn and understand, come closer to the ideal, which is Christ, or the ideal, which is what our founding fathers were reaching for. It was their vision for us. That's one thing that really upsets me about our current attitude toward our country and our founding fathers is this complete lack of understanding of the concept of vision. If we judge people for who they are when they establish their vision and we don't ever allow them to reach for it, when I'm 18 or 21, I establish a vision for my life And I back up and I have to walk that out. We're all the same with that. If I'm the age that I am, vision is looking into the future, seeing the kind of life or the kind of world that you want for yourself and in their case, for our country. And then you have to back up into your present and decide what steps do I need to take to get there? In terms of a country, we're fairly young. And instead of judging the country on what type of men they personally were, without even giving them the grace of putting that into a cultural perspective, we judge them based on the political correctness of our current era. That's not fair. But in addition to that, It's completely ignorant of the concept of vision. Regardless of what was actually happening, what they were saying is this is the kind of world that we would like to create. And these are the laws that we're going to set up so that you can have the freedom to reach this. It was like Moses. They knew they weren't going to get there. They were going to die before the promised land was reached. 
but they were setting it up so that their children and their children and their children and their children could get closer. And we were. We were getting closer and closer and closer. And the cool thing about my lifetime is I can see radical changes from when I was a teenager to now, currently, in a lot of different issues. We were getting closer to we the people. We were getting closer to liberty and justice for all. If liberty and justice for all doesn't exist for everyone, then the way to address that is through love and not destruction. So what I see right now is an abundance of evil. And how I define evil is anything that increases misery or compounds suffering. And so if you want to take that, and maybe throughout the week, just look around. What is increasing misery? What is compounding suffering? What solutions are increasing misery? What solutions are compounding suffering? That's not love. It is up to every one of us to discover the love within our heart, that spark, that divinity, that true self. Learn to love and manage our own parts, to address our trauma, to work on our bad behavior in our personal life, then to move out to the next level, which is our loved ones, our friends. Learn to love them. Learn to set boundaries. Learn to manage. From there, the next step is community, neighborhood. In doing so, we will change the world. I look forward to wrestling with these concepts with you. I am honored that you would listen. And I pray that our efforts toward unity will be blessed. And I know that love will save the world. Thank you.